In this video, we are going to see some of the facts on the floating point arithmetic operations. So before that, we should know what is a floating point. The one which you represent with the decimal point. So here, this is an integer and the decimal point is there. And after that, some numbers are there. If you represent it like this, then we call it as a floating point. Okay. And a floating point normally consists of two points. One is mantissa and then exponent. And this is nothing but radix. What do you mean by radix? Radix is nothing but base. Whether it is a base 10 or base 2 or base 8 like that. Okay. And this is the exponent. And this is the uh, this numerical value. And mostly it will be with the decimal point, mantissa point. And this we call it as mantissa. The two parts represent a number obtained from multiplying it is m into radix power exponent. That is what uh, you will be getting for a floating point. So let us take an example, 16.14 into 10 power 7. This can be cheated as when you bring this, you can bring this decimal point here and then here. So when you move forward, it is when you bring this towards left, then you increase the exponent value, increment. See here, from this point to this point means, if you make it as like this, 1.614, then you increment it by one, eight. Then again, if you bring it two point before, then you increment it by two. So when the, the decimal point moves towards left, you increase the exponent, and when it moves towards right, you decrease the exponent. So for example, this point you are moving here means, that is 161.4 means, here it becomes 10 power six. Okay, this is how you represent that floating point. Now, uh, a representation uh, according to IEEE 754 standard is like this. So here just it gives a, uh, like how we have with the syntax. Here is a syntax, minus one power s m, m is mantissa into two power e. This is for computer representation. It is in system, we, uh, in CPU, we have registers. In CPU, we have registers. So if it is a 32-bit register, how the floating point will be represented. And if it is a 64-bit representation, uh, how it can be represented. That's what here this picture shows. This is an IEEE standard. So here, if you see that if it is a 32-bit, then 0 to uh, 23 bits. It is 0 to 22 means shortly 23 bits. These bits are reserved for Mantis support. And here, from 23 to 30, that is 8 bits are reserved, the power for exponent. And then the, the uh, leftmost bit, that is MSB, will be for sign bit representation. So this is for single precision. Now, if I want to represent the more accuracy, then you have to go for a double precision. In which case, if it's a 64-bit representation, the 0 to 51, that is totally 52 bits are, represent, are allocated for Mantisa. And from 52, from 52 to 62, that is 11 bits are assigned for the exponent. And then this is the last bit. The MSB is as usual. One bit is reserved for sign bit. So when you do addition or subtraction, how you can do an addition and subtraction with the floating point? Suppose you have two bits, two numbers like this, 0.5342400 into 10 power two. You have to add this with this number. Now, if you check the mantis of what is different. Here it is 10 power, sorry, not mantis, huh? that uh, mantis will be different. But if you have to check for the exponent part, the radix must be same. And then you have to check the exponent. Both must be same. If they are different, then you have to make it to be same. And then only you can do addition. So for example, in this case, you have to take the uh, exponent, which is smaller value. So if you take here, this is a smaller value. This mantis are, that is, this is a smaller value. So in which case, now you have to adjust this one day. So alignment of the radix point since the exponent part must be made equal. So you have to make the exponent. Is here 10 power 2 means here also you have to make 10 power 2. So in order to do that 10 power 2, you have to make changes here. 
since we can move see here since we are able to move the decimal point like this this is called floating point okay so now we can move the decimal point see how we have represented here 16.14 is 10 power 7 means then we move the point towards left and we increment the exponent okay so uh, if we move towards right you have to reduce the uh, exponent so with that in mind now we have to make this to be equal to 2 10 power 2 either you have to make it as 10 power 2 or 10 power minus so this you have to make 10 power 2 or this you have to make 10 power minus 1 now let us make this uh, so in this case we take this lesser value and we try to make it to be this equal to this value so in the above example the exponent must be made equal to do addition for this matrix must be adjusted as there are two methods as i have said either you have to make it as equal to this or make this equal to this so shift to left so you have to shift left any one of the above digits to make the exponent equal but this is this results in loss of most significant weight when you keep shifting say for example this you are shifting like this then you will be losing the msp whereas if you shift towards right you will be adding more zeros um, but only the accuracy is matter so you will not be losing any uh, value much so now uh, let us say take shifting towards right will be the better so shifting towards right means uh, see here 5 3 2 4 0 0 we keep it as such and this we have to shift this this data you are shifting towards right and adding zeros so now what happens uh, when uh, when this point is moved towards left means you will be you can add that's what we have seen when this point moves means mantisa you are shifting right okay this value the uh, uh, magnitude value you are moving towards right but this you are moving towards left so when you are moving towards left you have to increment the value so now i am adding for example now i want to add one zero means point zero one five eight etc that this can be zero since uh, others are zero so okay you can write the zeros now this since i have moved uh, this from point from here i have to as i said if you move towards left uh, the point by adding zeros now you have to make this to be one so minus one plus one it is zero okay then again point zero zero because i have to make it equal to 10 power 2 so in which case it is 10 power I have added, I have moved. Now again, I shift one more point. So, which means I have to add one more zero. So, 158 into 10 power 2. Now, this uh, exponent and this exponent are same. So, now see here 0 0.0001580 into 10 power 2. Now, it is easy for us to add. So, the same thing goes for subtraction also. If I have to do subtraction, you have to make the mantisa to be equal. Then only you can do the additional subtraction. Now you can add just like any fixed point number. Now we'll see addition again on this, uh, some more example for addition. Now we'll consider when two normalized mantis are added. What do you mean by normalized? Making both the exponent to be same. Okay, then only you can do addition or subtraction. So in that case, we say that it will be normalized. So for example, if it is 10 power 5 and this is 10 power 2 means you have to make both to be the same. So doing so is called normalized. And when you're doing so, there may be after uh, doing that uh, and you are adding some, adding the data, Sometimes it may overflow. See here, this is an example. This will be as such 10 power 5 will be there. And when you add these two, here you get an overflow. So this bit should not be lost. So in that case, again, you have to do normalization. That is, 
moving the mantissa uh, that is this decimal point here and then you move this bit right so when you move this right when you move when you move this mantis this decimal point here what you will do you will be incrementing the exponent that's what here the next step we have done so point one one this is moved this side and this decimal point is moved towards right in which case you will be incrementing the uh, exponent so now let us take another example 1.x on value is 1.475 into 10 power 15 and y 1.23 into 10 power 12. now what we have to do is we have to add these two values this is one this exponent is 15 and this exponent is 12 it cannot be added so you have to make both them both of them to be the same okay so for that what we have done we have made both to be 50. So now we have to adjust the lesser value only, not the bigger value. So this you have to adjust according to the bigger value. So this should uh, up. Then what we are taking, this is 1.75, 475, don't change that. But this is 1.23 and exponent is 12. So now you adjust. See if it is 1.23 into 10 power 12 means I want to increment so for incrementing what we have to do we have to move the decimal point to x left okay that is mantis mantis is this value it should be moved right the point should be moved left and the decimal the value should value is nothing but we call it as mantis it should be moved right so now one two three now i have moved one point from here now. so now what happened it is into 10 power 15. But what we have to do, we have to find 10 up to 1050. So now you add a 0 0.123. Now it is 10 power 14. But still it is not that. So point zero zero one two three into 10 power 15. Okay. So see this value. 0 0.00 zero added on this point so one two three now you can add these two as the uh, data is normalized that is the exponent is the both the exponents are same and because they both the exponents are same you will have the answer also as a normalized value it is nothing but the same exponent you will have now we'll consider for subtraction when two normalized mantis are subtracted the result may contain the most significant zeros okay so for example here you uh, both are same both already it is normalized now we are subtracting when you are subtracting 8 minus 3 5 7 minus 2 3 then 6 minus 6 0 0 here if you say that here you have two zeros but while writing you should not have like that you have to make that after the decimal point there must be a number it should not be a zero non-zero number should be there so what you have to do, you have to adjust. And this condition is said to be underflow. And this you have to remove. But is here, it is overflow. After this decimal point, you have the result. Then you are adjusting in such a way that it comes after the decimal point. This is called, this, is, this condition is called overflow. And after the decimal point, when you have a zero or some result, that is called underflow. This is overflow and this is underflow. So this also has to be, in this case also, you have to adjust. So now what you do, you move the decimal point towards right and then decrease the uh, exponent. So now you point one point, you're reducing, so it becomes four. Then again, here you move, so now it becomes three. Two point you are moving towards right. So now it is 10 power three. So in the next video, we will see the algorithm for addition and subtraction of floating point numbers.